Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're so happy that you're back as you continue on your journey, either towards achieving certification or renewing your certification. Whichever path you are on, we want to support you every step of the way to make sure you are successful. We're continuing to look at learning theory because it continues to be a muddy point for many nurse educators as they take the CNE exam. And just like in every episode, we're continuing to look at, at our thought provoking question that is going to help you stay focused on the specific content that we're taking a look at in our episode. Go ahead and pull out Billings and Halstead, teaching and nursing. We're going to be pulling content from chapter 16, focusing on how we align our teaching strategies with the actual accomplishment of meeting those learning objectives and also how we facilitate learning and what those evidence-based teaching strategies are that we should be using in the classroom. All right, and then the other resource you wanna go ahead and pull out is going to be your worksheet, okay? Your study worksheet, and you can find that right here in the description. That is going to be just a single page document that you wanna print out every time you check out an episode or if you are joining us for any of our webinars, okay? This single document really allows you to stay focused in the time that you are spending with us in our various episodes. You wanna go ahead and put the date, whatever date it is for you today that you're watching this episode. And then think about what you wanna accomplish at the end of this episode, okay? We want you to be clear about where your goals are as we support you in achieving those. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our content for our time together today. If you're not familiar with Chickering's work, you will be by the end of the time that we um, finish talking in this episode. All right, so when we look at Chickering, their work specifically looked at how can we better enhance the learning experience for our students. That is the goal of Chickering's work. So what teaching strategies can we use? What strategies can we use? And how do we deliver this information in a way that's gonna help our students learn? That is our ultimate objective. We want our students to be able to learn. So when they leave our classroom, they have had a rich learning experience with us and they are also knowledgeable about the content that we have taught them in the course. All right, so for those of you that haven't had a chance to take a look at our practice question or our thought provoking question, let's go ahead and take a look at it together. So we have several of our students that are struggling with understanding care of the congestive heart failure patient. Which strategy should the instructor use to best facilitate their learning needs? We have four choices. A is a one minute paper, B are unfolding case studies, C, algorithms, or D, flashcards. Okay, so just think about what is going to be the best way based on these four choices we have to facilitate and really to ensure that our learners' needs have been met. Just like in other episodes, we wanna answer the question what, right? We're focusing on the who, the what, and the how. So looking at the what, first, what is this theory all about? What are the underpinnings associated with Chickering's work? First, we want to engage in teaching strategies that are going to support the healthy student-faculty relationship. We wanna be very clear about what our expectations are as well as what students can expect of us. Um, another concept associated with his work is that we are to develop a spirit of reciprocity and cooperation amongst our students. We learn from our students just like they learn from us. And third, we wanna engage in using these active learning techniques that are evidence-based to ensure that we are, again, meeting these learning objectives. So we're not developing great teaching strategies that are going to be exciting and fun for our students but that we are indeed aligning these teaching strategies with the actual learning objectives, okay? That's a really important step. So now that we've talked about the what, what are some of those key concepts or underpinnings associated with Chickering's work? Chickering's work? How? What are those key steps that are gonna help us as educators ensure that we are aligning with these evidence-based teaching strategies? So what are those strategies that we're gonna be using? First is we are going to encourage our students to engage in these activities. There are a couple of steps that we can follow to make sure this happens. First is going to be having a strong 
alignment between what our teaching strategies are and the lesson plan for that specific day. Let's take congestive heart failure as a good example. If we know that's our topic, let's consider if students are able to apply these concepts that we're teaching in the classroom about heart failure into the clinical setting or into the lab setting. Okay, we want to consider that because we know when there is strong alignment based on Dr. Benno's novice to expert work, we are engaging in that active learning in the classroom that is going to support the student's ability to make decisions about the delivery of safe patient care practices. Okay, so we know in nursing, it's all about application and we wanna do our part in the classroom in bridging that theory to practice gap to the best of our ability, okay? And then second, we wanna be able to help our students to really guide them in developing and advancing their knowledge of how to engage in those critical thinking and problem solving skills. Tanner's work talks a lot about that. Um, so make sure you take a look at Tanner's clinical judgment model if you're not familiar. And then third, we wanna create this positive inclusive learning environment where we are taking the time to get to know who's in the room, right, with our students. We wanna to get to know a little bit about them. We wanna keep it professional, but we wanna ensure that we are meeting our students' needs by first of all, knowing who's in the room. Do our students have um, first do, firsthand experience in the healthcare setting? Have they been a CNA? Have they been an LPN? Do our students have, are they engaging in a second career journey? So did they have a first career? All of these clues really help us better understand our students in an effort to better help them close their knowledge gaps. Okay, so that's the third key component that we want to consider. Again, to recap, we want to in interact with our students in a way that's going to promote active learning and that we are engaging with our students. Second, helping them advance their critical thinking and problem solving skills, bridging that theory to practice area and then promoting that positive inclusive inclusive learning environment. All right, so let's take a look at the answer to our thought provoking question. So if you chose unfolding case studies, you are correct. Okay, so a round of applause for you. Now, if you did not choose unfolding case studies, we don't want you to feel bad about that. What we want you to do is write that down as a key takeaway to go back and take a look at active learning and teaching strategies. Again, that's chapter 16. In the sixth edition, that's going to start on page 286 in Billings and Halstead. We really like this chapter because it lays out different teaching strategies. Just about every single teaching strategy you can think of is listed in chapter 16. Starting on page 288, you see the introduction of teaching strategies. And we're going to be talking about these specific concepts as it relates to Bloom's taxonomy and the three learning domains as well. Um, but if you have had a chance to think about the rationale for why unfolding case studies is correct, let's talk about why the other three options are not correct. Okay, so they were the one minute paper. We know that that's a great reflective activity, depends on how you use it, but that one minute paper allows students to kind of reflect on and think about a specific concept, or it could be as an example of policy and procedure that they have been able to put in place in their clinical setting. Okay, so that really doesn't facilitate learning in the way that we are interacting with the student to help them clarify their muddy points. Algorithm is more associated with a process that we follow based on the patient presentation. Okay, so that's not the best answer. And then flashcards, again, that's an independent activity. It doesn't involve us interacting with the student. All right, so hopefully that helped clarify the rationale for the correct answer and those incorrect answers. Unfolding case studies are a great way for us to facilitate learning, to engage in a conversation with students about the rationale for making the decision every single step of the way. Okay, so that's the benefit of that unfolding case study. It truly does unfold or present facts as we go down the pathway of learning with our student. All right, well, hopefully this content review has been helpful. As always, you can reach out to us at info at drselleseducate.com and over on our website. Remember that we are celebrating Nurses Month this entire month of May, and we actually have a 20% off discount right now. So you're going to go to our website. You can choose any program, product, or service that you like, and just put in when you check out Nurses Week 
2023. Okay, that information is right here in our description as well. Until next time, we look forward to seeing you for the next episode and we hope you have a wonderful Nurses Month. Bye-bye, everybody.